Welcome to this video on using dialog boxes. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video we're going to have a look at what dialog boxes can do for you. Dialog boxes are those boxes that pop up a warning about something or give you a nugget of information about what's happening in the program you're using. There are five basic kinds of dialog boxes. A message box, a yes-no dialog, a simple entry dialog, a file chooser dialog and a colour chooser dialog. Several of these have alternative options but we'll look at those as we go. The first thing we need to do, as always, is to import the pieces of code that we need. Now let me show you the program running. Here we have an application with just a message box. I'm going to click on the messages menu item and we're going to have a look at the different kinds of me message boxes that you can have. As you'll notice this one went ping and it's a piece of information. You'll notice the I icon. Python is excellent. You'll notice the error ding. It's saying it's a mistake to skip lab work and it really is. And finally, there's the warning type. Failing to be punctual causes failing. That's a warning. Those are the three kinds of message boxes you can have, but you can also have yes-no dialogues. And this is where you have an option of how things can happen. And the way you choose is by clicking on a particular button. So, do you want to continue learning Python? Well, let's say no. Would you like me to cover that again? Yes. And you'll notice that what's being returned is an integer value. You can use that integer value in your program. So do you like Python? Well, obviously, yes. And would you like to continue learning after all? Yes, of course you would. The next kind is the single value dialog. Here you ask the user for a very short piece of information. So in this case what is 2 plus 2? Whatever the user types in is then returned when you click on OK. In this case I've typed in 4 and probably got a pat on the head from my maths teacher. Now we can move on to the file chooser dialogues and there are several of these. The first asks me to select a directory. So I'm going to choose the Windows directory and select that folder. And as you can see, it's returned the full path to that directory. The next item asks me to select a file. So I'll just go into the Windows directory and choose a file. When I click Open, it returns the full path to that file including the file name. Now I can also select more than one file. So if I go back into Windows and down to the bottom again I could select say the bottom three files. In which case when I click open what I get are the names of those three files. So in this way we can get information back. We can also do things in the opposite direction. We can do a save as. And here, supposing I wanted to write to a file called writexe, I could try that. It says writexe already exists. Do you want to replace it? Well, no, I don't, but I've got no code to do the replacing. So that's OK. I'll click on yes. And it tells me that I've just overwritten C colon Windows writexe. The final type is the colour chooser type. Here I can pick a colour. So I like that purple. I'm going to click on OK. And what comes back are the RGB values for that colour as well as the hexadecimal values. Those of you who've done some HTML will recognise the hexadecimal values. You can use both of these types in any Python program. So let's have a look at the code that produces all of that. First of all, the message boxes. As we said, there are three kinds. There's show info, which tells you something and gives you an information icon. There's the show error one, which tells you you've done something wrong. And there's the show warning, which lets you know that something might not be going quite right. Now let's have a look at the yes no dialogues. There are four of these and we tell it message box dot and then one of the four options and what, whichever button the user presses comes back into answer. So you can use answer in your program. So we have an ask OK cancel which checks whether you press the OK button or the cancel button. 
You have ask, retry, cancel, which works out whether you press the retry or cancel button. You've got ask, yes, no. And guess what that does? Yep, it works out whether you press the yes or the no button. And finally, you've got the yes, no, cancel option. In each of these cases, you get a number back. And then you can create your if statements telling your program what you'd like it to do if the user has selected this particular option. Now, the next kind is the single value dialog box. Here, we're asking the user a simple question. So we're asking them to input something. In this case, what is 2 plus 2? And we're telling it to put whatever the user has typed in into the variable called answer. If the user doesn't enter anything, the result of answer is something called none. None is the same sort of thing as true or false, but just means there's nothing here. So if there is nothing here, it says you didn't enter an answer, but if there is, then it puts whichever answer the user gave into the text box. Next, we have the file chooser dialog. The first thing we have to do is to say which types of files we're interested in. This is a standard format that's used throughout computing. And if we say all files, that will override any others. But I wanted to show you that you could create a list of file types if you wanted to. So in this case, it's asking us to choose any file. Now we can carry on. The next kind, the first kind of dialog, is asking us to select a directory. It's attaching that particular dialog to the root, and it's telling us there's an initial directory I want you to look at, and it's giving the title for this particular dialog as please select a directory. When the user says open, the name of whichever directory and the path to it goes into answer, and you can then use answer in your program. The next kind is the ask open file name. This is similar to ask directory, except that it returns a file name rather than a particular directory. And as you can see, we have a file types option here, which allows us to select the types of files that we would like the user to choose from. So for example, if we were using Word documents, we could select just dot .doc and dot .docx. Next is the Ask Open File Names. Now this is similar to the one above, except it, you're choosing not just one file name, but possibly several. And all of those, that whole list of files, is being drawn back into Answer. And the Answer just becomes a list. And you can work through that list to do whatever you want with the files that have been selected. And finally, you've got a Save As dialog which allows you to choose a particular file name and then asks you, are you sure you want that file saved as this? Again, we're getting an answer back that is the, that is the full path to that particular file with the file name. The next item is the colour chooser. This allows us to choose a particular colour in a palette. Yet we get two answers back, an RGB colour and a web colour, and we can do whatever we want with either of those. So it may be allowing the user to select the back colour for the window, or it may be allowing the user to select the back colour for the window and another for the foreground colour when we choose it again. In this way, we can make our applications more user-centric.